Welcome back for the second episode of The Plastic General. I'm your host, Christian Aldo, and our show specializes and focuses in on 132 scale World War II plastic toy soldiers, vehicles, and extra special tips about the hobby. So today, we're going to discuss Italian plastic soldiers produced by both Water to, Waterloo 1815 and a set of Italian infantry in North Africa by Hing Fat. After that, we're going to discuss a big secret that all of you need to get in on, and that's 132 scaled 3D printed tanks. So let's get started. So the first set that we're going to go through is going to be a set made by an Italian company. Um, the name of the company was Waterloo 1815. Now they only came out with uh, two 132 scale Italian sets. And uh, we're going to go through the first one now. We'll do the second one, the second set of, uh, on the later show. So the first pose is a standing sharpshooting, some uh, standing sharpshooting in Italian rifle. The Carbino, I think it's called. Pretty useful figure. The second pose is a standing, throwing a grenade with rifle. Another very useful pose. So what I really love about this set, they only did six poses, but all six poses, it's a very well-rounded set. It gives you a great variety of poses. Kneeling, sharpshooting rifle. Uh, he's also wearing um, one of the little red toques that I think the, uh, the Italian, um, the Mussolini youth would have been wearing. This is North Africa. You know, the backbone to any great toy soldier set is variety. And this set comprises everything that a, that a really good set needs to uh, have. Firing a Beretta submachine gun from waist. The next pose, another useful, a firing a heavy machine gun in a prone position. And then last is an Italian commander waving his soldiers on for the attack or to advance. I just wish that they would have had one more pose, which would have been a regular soldier running with, let's say, a rifle and a bayonet or running, firing a submachine gun. That would have made the perfect set a well-rounded set. But you know what? They only had six poses and they use them very well. Nothing, none of the poses here are redundant. It's a fantastic set. Forgive my lazy, my lazy paint, my lazy paint job. I don't care. They're good enough for me for now. I'll get back to them later. So the second set we're gonna talk about, it needs a little bit of an explanation. The company is called Hing Fat out of China. Now they obviously made these toy soldiers for kids, but the decisions that they made kind of made them for the collectors too. So they definitely made a set of Italian soldiers in World War II. They made 12 poses all together. And one of the faults with the set is that they made the, a lot of the weapons too big and there were some really wonky features about them. But, but because I'm a sculptor, I was able to get in on the figures and, and, and snip down things and, and shrink the weapons down a little bit and to customize them so that they're passable to be in a person like, like mine or your sets. And, um, and a lot of collectors have sort of discarded this set, but I'm, gonna, I'm here to show you today that the Hing Fat Italians are definitely worth acquiring, especially if you make the augmentations to them the way I have. This is a 12 pose set, but I'm only gonna show you the eight poses that I think go well with the North Italian, uh, the, the North African theater. Because one amazing thing about the other four missing poses that I'm gonna cover on a later date is that the four other poses are Italian SS figures, uniquely in sculpture. So I'm gonna review those at a later date. Let's get started with this set. So the first figure of the eight poses that I'm gonna review is a commander firing a pistol. Now what I did for this guy was, he had this 
crazy oversized pistol. So I just went in with my X-Acto knife and trimmed it down. So now it's, um, it's a very acceptable figure. Pose number two is another, it looks like a Mussolini youth with a little Fez hat on. And uh, he's running, advancing with a rifle. Pose number three, prone position. Obviously, it's inspired by the Airfix Italian pose. Um, he's lying on the ground and throwing a grenade. Pose number four, prone with heavy Beretta. I think that's a Beretta. I, I should do my research a little bit better before I start one of these, but I'm pretty sure it's a Beretta. Um, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. Sorry. Pose number five is kneeling, firing Beretta machine gun up in the air. Now, I usually have a big problem with poses like this. Like, you can only have one guy firing up in the air. What are you going to do with, like, ten guys firing up in the air? They don't even make a pose of, uh, of, the, of, of a figure kneeling, sharpshooting. So why do you want someone firing up in the air? I, I hate poses like this, unless there's, like, 20 poses in the set. But we'll have to just let it pass. In conjunction with the other, with the Waterloo set, they, the both sets complement each other the way I'm going to show you in a minute. This next pose is a guy sort of like uh, cheering some sort of victory. Maybe he blew up an enemy tank holding a rifle. I also uh, trimmed down the size of this weapon. It was a little on the ridiculous size, the ridiculous side, but um, he's all right. Then uh, a standing sharpshooting pose. I trimmed the rifle down just a little bit. It's more acceptable. Especially once you paint the figures up, they get a lot better too. And the very last pose is the one I did the most work on. Uh, this was a pose of a really bad pose. They had this fictitious, oversized, overly bulky uh, mortar. So what I did is I, I just... I used a Dremel tool and I Dremeled the mortar right out of there. And then I supplied him now with a, a mortar that was made by Toy Soldiers of San Diego. So I actually, when I'm using this figure, I actually have him with this other guy here. And so now they can complement uh, the mortar. Now, let me show you this. I'm gonna bring back some of the Waterloo figures. They compare quite well to the Waterloo figures and they, they complement each other. Uh, the guy's firing. So the nice thing is you have a, a guy firing, standing sharp shooting, and the other guy's wearing the Faz hat. So they're two legitimately different poses. Um, the commander, the two commanders, uh, you have a commander running and the other one firing a, a pistol. So that's a nicely, a well-rounded out set. You have a guy firing in the air, sharpshooting, and the other guy kneeling, sharpshooting, straight forward, and grenade. It's a very nice set of six poses plus eight poses. That's 14 really great poses of northern, of North Italian campaign soldiers. I'm really excited to share this with you. On the internet, I've discovered a person that produces 132 scaled World War II vehicles in 3D using 3D printing technology. And um, you can request almost anything. And if you want it in 1 30th scale, she can print it up for you in 1 30th scale, or she can make it in 1 35th scale. But why would you want to do that? They make model kits for 1 35th scale. This shows about 1 32 and 1 30th. So no one has ever produced an Italian M40 tank. And uh, the, the person that produces these is, they call her the printer chick. And you, you can see her stuff on eBay. She does a fantastic job. So I did paint mine, did a, a decent, just a, a passable paint job. And the tank comes in about four different parts. You get the main body, and then you get the sides uh, where, the, where the tracks are. And, uh, and you get the hull, I mean, the, uh, the turret. And... Um, and then you just put it together with super glue. And so there you have it. A 132 scale M40 tank. And there they are next to the figures showing the scale. It's a wonderful vehicle. 
And that, that'll run you about $75. So until someone makes uh, a, an official tank, a uh, pre-designed tank, then that'll be, it'll have to do. So the next tank on the list is the M40 Italian Assault Gun. And again, the, uh, the printer chick did a great job with this one. It did come in one, two, three, four, four different parts, but I just decided to glue everything together. And um, it has decent detail. And here is the tank compared to the 132 figure for size comparison. I did remove the barrel and put in a, a more accurate style barrel. I just snapped the, uh, the barrel off, found a, uh, a metal pole made by um, Evergreen Plastics and stuck it in there and glued it in. Again, that will run you about $75. And last but not least is the Italian M41 self-propelled gun created by the printer chick. It, um, it comes in one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces. And it's got a, a movable turret. So what this, uh, what this basically, it was like the, the, the other two tanks were all basically the same chassis. So for this tank, you would have a crew working behind here, loading and firing. It's a great tank. Again, it runs you about $75 to $80, this one. And um, for the Italian campaign, North Africa, those are the three basic tanks you need. And I think this is an 80 millimeter gun, 88 millimeter gun, or very close to it, or a 90 millimeter gun. So these are really nice sets, and I, I totally recommend them. They're great for the Italian, uh, they're great for the North African Italian campaign with uh, working with the Africa Corps. If you want to expand your Africa Corps a little bit, there you go. And um, that pretty much concludes this episode. That's our episode for today. So don't forget to hit subscribe and to hit the bell so you can be notified about future episodes coming up. We do two a week, so you'll be notified. And hit like, because we know that you like plastic World War II toy soldiers. And before we go, this episode was sponsored by MyDogTag.com for your customized military dog tags. Just mention the Plastic General, and they will reward us with money so that we can continue making more episodes and reviewing more toy soldier sets, more vehicles, more Plastic 132 World War II because you're obsessed like I'm obsessed. Like the Plastic General is obsessed. Bye for now.